President Joe Biden will begin his Middle East trip with a tour of the Palmachem Air Force Base, home to Israeli air defense systems. His administration is pushing to deepen security ties between Israel and its Arab neighbors, including integrating their air defense systems to counter the Iranian threat. Bilaterally, we're talking with nations across the region about uh, air defense capabilities specifically and what we can do to assist with, with their air defense. And then and then exploring the idea of, of being able to kind of integrate all those air defenses together. A task made more challenging as the Israelis are now under a caretaker government. From Tel Aviv, Biden will fly directly to Jeddah, a first for an American president. It's another sign from the Saudis, who have withheld recognition of Israel over its Palestinian occupation. But we also know that the Saudis have made concessions and have even dealt with the Israelis uh, behind closed doors and not publicly. So uh, if if going public with this um, is, um, you know, the message that the Biden administration would like to send, that this is not possible, that progress is being made. Yes, but let's not take it too far into saying that this is the first step towards normalization. In Jeddah, Biden will meet leaders of the Gulf states, plus Egypt, Iraq, and Jordan, to offer security assurances while asking to increase burden sharing at a time when Washington is focused on the Ukraine war and the China threat. He'll urge an extension of the ceasefire in Yemen and push producing countries to pump more oil to lower skyrocketing prices triggered by the war in Ukraine. He must balance the strategic interest of working with authoritarian regimes with American values like human rights. It's important for America to to continue to raise these in ways, in part because of that competition with China and Russia. Certainly Putin or Xi are are not raising the, 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 the cases of women's rights activists in Saudi Arabia. It's not a priority for them. And I do think since America still is the preferred security partner, we have some leverage that we could use to have a constructive conversation. Still, activists have criticized Biden's plans to meet King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and repairing ties with Saudi Arabia, a country he once called a pariah, including the fiancé of Jamal Khashoggi, the Saudi journalist murdered with the prince's approval. When Biden meets Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas in the West Bank to reaffirm support for the two-state solution, observers will also watch how he handles the case of Palestinian-American journalist Shireen Abu Akleh, who, according to U.S. experts, likely died by an Israeli bullet. Patsy Widakuswara, VOA News at the White House.